Welcome dear audience students and scholars here I am Dr. Amjad Ali dear scholars so far as we have assembled the dynamic aggregate demand and aggregate supply model and we have used this model uh, for the two application lessons for the monetary policy so in this video we are going to discuss a case study uh, the Fed versus the European Central Bank okay when we have uh, the dynamic aggregate demand and aggregate supply model according to the dynamic aggregate demand and aggregate supply model a key policy choice facing any central bank concerns the parameters of its policy rule okay the monetary policy parameters uh, theta pi and theta y when we are talking about theta uh, uh, this represents the responsiveness of target interest rate to inflation and when we have a theta y it represents the responsiveness of the target interest rate to output this uh, these two parameters determine how much the interest rate responds uh, to macroeconomic conditions as we have just seen these responses uh, in turn determine the volatility of inflation and output. Okay, and then we can make the comparison between the US Federal Reserve and uh, uh, the European uh, Central Bank. The US Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank uh, appears to have uh, different approaches uh, to this uh, decision. The legislation that created the Fed states explicitly uh, that its goal is to promote effectively the goals of uh, uh, maximum employment, stable prices and moderate long-term interest rates. Because the Fed is uh, supposed to stabilize both employment and prices, it is said to have a dual mandate. The third goal, moderate. Uh, uh, long-term interest rates should follow naturally from stable prices by contrast uh, uh, the European Central Bank says on its website uh, that uh, uh, the primary objective of the European Central Bank's monetary policy is to maintain price stability uh, the European Central Bank aims at inflation rate of below but close to 2 percent over the medium term are other macroeconomic goals including stability of output and employment appear to be scandry. So we can uh, uh, make the differences uh, 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 what actual differences uh, between the Fed and uh, uh, the ECB. Okay when uh, uh, we uh, can interpret these differences in the uh, in the light of our uh, dynamic aggregate demand and aggregate supply model uh, compared to the Fed and uh, the European Central Bank seems to give more weight to inflation stability and less weight to output. Okay, this uh, difference is objectives should be reflected in the parameters of. Uh, the uh, monetary policy rules to achieve a uh, dual mandate the Fed would respond more to output and uh, less to inflation than the central bank European central bank would okay a case uh, in uh, point occurred uh, in 2008 when the world economy was experiencing uh, rising oil prices a financial crisis and a slowdown in economic activity the fed responded uh, to these events by lowering interest rates uh, from about 5% to a range of 0 to 0.25% uh, over the course of a year Okay, whereas uh, uh, the European Central Bank facing a similar situation also cut uh, interest rates uh, but uh, by much less. The European Central Bank was less concerned about uh, recession and more concerned about keeping inflation in check. So 
uh, we can conclude uh, and make the prediction of the dynamic aggregate demand and aggregate supply for the Fed uh, and uh, the European Central Bank. The dynamic aggregate demand and aggregate supply model predicts that uh, other things equal the policy of the European Central Bank should over time uh, lead to a more variable output and more stable inflation. Testing this prediction, however, is difficult for two reasons. First, because the European Central Bank was established only in 1998, there is not uh, yet enough data to establish the long-term effects of its policy. Second and perhaps more important, uh, other things are not always equal. Europe and the United States differ in many ways beyond the policies of their central banks and these other uh, differences may affect output and inflation in ways unrelated to differences in monetary policy priorities. So this is all about uh, uh, the uh, application lesson for the monetary policy and the case study of uh, the Fed versus the European Central Bank. So see you with another video. Ciao.